Dad, we're going live six minutes early. Good thing. <laughs> you know what else I do early? Run? Yes. Get up? Yes. Yeah. You know who else got up early today? Yes, you also got up early yeah. today. Yeah. Who's your tired daddy? You are my <laughs> tired daddy. Yes. I'm your tired daddy. <laughs> um, all right. Yes. We are back. We are in Bethesda, Maryland. We are. At the we... YA headquarters. Oh, my. The YA Worldwide headquarters. The YAH Worldwide Headquarters. Yes, yes. The um, Worldwide Headquarters of YAH. Would appreciate and enjoy. Oh, and there go the and, lights. Yeah. Um, would appreciate and enjoy. Yep, there they yeah, go. Yeah, there they go. If someone can confirm audio sounds good, doing the whole new two mic setup yeah. and all that fun stuff, so we'd appreciate yeah. that. Also, we're hiring joinya.com slash careers. And I I've guess I guess we're working here because we got Who's Your Daddy and yeah. we got What Up? Zach and Ray. Yeah, so there my go. guys, yeah. Jesus is here as well. So we got yeah. everyone in the building. Pops. Well, apparently there's no one in this <laughs> building, which is which is why all, all the lights went off. We got David over on Facebook. We always love when people are on Facebook watching as well. Oh, so do I you. ever. You don't even have a Facebook, so get out of you here. Know, yeah, but I do have a face space. You got a face space. Yes. Maybe yeah. you do. A my book. Pops, a my book? <laughs> Toss on your headphones really quick. Do I have to? I got something for you. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Uh, that, that's Was that? not me. Is that? That's pretty damn yeah, close. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I mean, they did it. They did it. Yeah, yeah, they did a nice job. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pops. Tonight's stream. Yeah. Here's what we're doing. We got someone on Twitch watching. No, yeah. my, my God. Yeah. Twitch. Twitch. You know, Twitch is suddenly right after TikTok, my new favorite. Are you a big Twitch guy? Oh, uh, God, am I ever? <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to. What is Twitch? I'll show you later. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. It's not like OnlyFans. No, it's not like <laughs> OnlyFans. I mean, it's kind of like. But for gaming. For who? Gaming. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Kyler Murray's on Twitch. Kyler Murray's on Twitch. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Here's the deal, Pops. Yeah. We've got. A new used car market update. Yeah. All right. What the heck is going on in the used car market? Let's break it down. Unfortunately, and it's not too terribly surprising because of some of the other news that we're going to talk about yeah. in just a moment. Used car prices are on their way back, back up. up. We yeah. wrote a post back on the JoinYA website. Let me open it up. JoinYA.com. Resources. Blog. Blog. Used. Blog. Blog. Yeah. Used car prices are going up again. We broke down kind of the highlights from the yes. Black Book data you, here. You, you, may I say? I, I did this, yes. You, I, well, what I wanted to say is, may I say you did an excellent job on that breakdown. Thank you. Um, you know, there are any number of news outlets in America and perhaps even the world that should be contacting you to, to, to do a story on us because you, you captured the essence of of what the hell's going on in the used car market in a clear and concise manner. Thank you, Pops. Um, yeah. I'll toss this link in the uh, stream chat if anyone's interested. Yeah. But the so, key so takeaway... So may I say, since I'm so tired, read the goddamn thing. <laughs> Can't curse on stream. Read the thing. Okay. So I can take a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. We're seeing um, the commentary to this is we saw 21 straight weeks of price increases, used yes. car price increases. Then we saw seven weeks yes. of wholesale used car price declines. And now we're seeing a trend. This is the fourth week for fourth week for cars, <laughs> third week for other vehicle types where we've seen price increases on the wholesale yes. market. And unfortunately, we never really saw a commensurate decline in retail prices. Sorry, we didn't see done. seven weeks of retail price decline. You know, I love when you consummate your commensurate. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and, and the story's been the same in terms of which segments are seeing the most velocity of change. For example, subcompact, compact cars, the Soros word. Can you, can I say one? Can you, could you even begin to imagine what your vocabulary would have been like had you, I don't know, completed more than three Look semesters of college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He reads books and he and he steals all the words out of the books. But, but you know, could you imagine if he actually had had continued his formal education? That book. Yeah, that book. Yeah, that book. Yeah, he buys. He doesn't read them, folks. That book. He's got that. Oh my god. He got dinner with these guys last night. Good book. Yeah. That book. Wow. He's got more books. He, oh, he does. He likes books, and and apparently he. he got the Mini Cooper. Yes, and apparently, apparently, he he lifts words out of those books <laughs> so he can throw them into 
in, in a conversational manner. He does it well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so we've seen subcompact, compact cars, midsize cars, because yes. they're the more affordable. Allegedly. <laughs> We're seeing sports cars. This is the seasonality in sports cars. Yes, absolutely. It is. This is when, when sports cars, uh, you know, right after the autumnal equinox. Equinox? Wow. Some good. kind of Knox. <laughs> Let's all go to Fort Knox. <laughs> <laughs> Truck and SUV segment, same story. Subcompacts and then also minivans. Yes. Lots of movement and, and prices going up on the wholesale market for those. Then we've got, so we answered the question, how much higher will used car prices go? Wholesale prices are up 36% so far this year. We haven't reached the peak. The peak was 37% yes. a little bit earlier, but we're going we're gonna to surpass that. That's well, probably next week. Likely next week. Yes. Retail prices are the highest they've ever been this year. Yes. They're up over well over 25%, nearly 26%. Yes. We put, um, we put the, here's a question, can wholesale and retail prices increase even more? We think so. And this was our estimate is around 10% increase in wholesale used car price values and likely a 5 to 7% increase in retail values as well. The reason we're able to say that and say that with some confidence is because if I flip the screen, let me actually, uh, let me X out of that thing. Oopsies, yeah. clicked on the wrong button, clicked on the wrong button again. I hate um, that. All right, let me click on this yeah. and let me share my screen. We can say that with some confidence because the, the homepage of Automotive News. Well, Did you? People think we're doom and gloom. Well, this is where we get it. From. Look at what we posted on the YAA. Um, yeah, look uh, at those guys. Those look are good look guys. at those dudes. This was our story this morning. Yeah. So this is this was this morning. Oh, yes. Alex Partners estimates chip shortage will cost industry 20, two, 210 20. billion. Yep. Not 22. Then the next story right below it was yes. White House pushes companies to be more transparent on chip supplies. VW out, uh, cuts output at Wolfsburg plant again on chip shortage. And then what was the next post? Oh, that was, yeah. yeah. Will the chip shortage end in 2022? And, and, and we got like 300 votes on this. 21% of you said yes. 79% of you said no. And then what was the next post? Um, oh. Oh, wow. You didn't know that. I thought I filmed you guys a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, wow. anyway. Um, so what's going on is this. Yes. And, and it's having a direct impact on used car values because um, in some parts or many parts, uh, a vast majority of the country, there is actual new car shortages on dealers' lots. Um Either the stuff is pre-sold before it gets in, uh, or they only have one or two vehicles that aren't sold that are on their lots. So the, there's there's less trade-ins, less lease returns, so and less new cars for people to buy. So that is con- going to continue to drive up both wholesale and retail prices on used cars. Because if people can't buy a new car, you know, one of the greatest... One of the greatest salesmen of all time on his deathbed, on his deathbed, okay, a young a young buck salesman went up to him and said, Saul, Saul, what's the secret? And almost with Saul's last dying breath, Saul said, switch them. <laughs> okay, switch them from whatever they're on to whatever you got. Oh, you mean, yeah, I yeah, got gotcha. you. You switch them from, if if they were, if they came into your dealership to buy a new car and you don't have any, switch them to a used car. If they came in to buy a, a Toyota Corolla and you don't have any, but you have Camrys, switch them to a Camry. So the key to a salesperson being successful is switching the customer from what they wanted to what you have. And that's what you're going to. So if people go in to buy a new car, and there are none, those taking Saul's dying breath advice <laughs> will switch them. And that's what's happening. And the prices of those used cars are going up because there's nothing else for people to buy. And it's almost like the tone has changed over the past few days in terms of the chip crisis is what we're calling yes. it. Yes. And yeah. the reason I say that, and, and there are some pseudo positive outcomes for this again people who are leasing someone who leased in 2019 is also now going to be in a really great spot in 2022 is well, the expectation when i was having dinner with the, with my dear friend lee on the what was it wednesday night what's up ken yeah hey ken's in the house hope you're doing well man. yes um when i was having dinner with lee uh his lease is up in 11 months yeah he said he said 
I drove by the Subaru dealer. They don't have any cars. What am I going to do? I said, well, you've got how many miles on your car that's two plus years old? He goes, 12,000. I said, you're going to buy your lease at the end because you're going to buy it for a, uh, for a, a, a value that was set three years ago that is going to be much below what the real market value will be. And it'll make more sense for you economically to buy that car. You'll know the history of the car. Maybe it'll have 18,000 miles on it when it's time to get rid of it. Yep. So you'll just buy your car out. He goes, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And that's the reality, right? So we're, yes. we don't expect, again, let me, let me share the screen and let's, let's flip back to automotive news. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell us we're gloom and doom. Yeah, come on, we're, we're just doing the best we can here. Yeah. Chip shortage will cost industry two hundred and ten billion would it be? And seven point uh, seven million units in twenty twenty one. The previous forecast, because we get a lot of slack for this as well. Yeah. Hey, why why didn't you guys get this right? Or yeah. you know, you said this, you said that. The new figures are up considerably from the firm's May forecast. So, so bear in mind here, we get forecast yes. data from auto. Someone's in the building. We get forecast <laughs> data from Auto Forecast Solutions. Yes, and from in this case, yes, uh, and, and, and Auto Forecast Solutions is, is wrong every week. But they're projecting <laughs> they're projecting nearly nine and a half million cars lost to production globally. Yep. Where Alex Partners is forecasting seven point seven yep. million units. Yep, I like, but but they in twenty twenty one. Yes, I don't think we're gullible enough to believe that this is just gonna. Oh, now it's twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, it's over. It's no, over. It's not going to be over. It really isn't, and yeah. that's where the next story right below it. I find this really telling. Yes, White House pushes companies to be transparent on chip supplies. So there is a push from the White House and from the, the Secretary of Commerce, yes. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. Raimondo? Raimondo? Raimondo. We filmed some videos today where I called my dad Raimondo. Yeah. It's time to get more aggressive. So this article, it's fascinating. It really, really is. But representatives from companies including TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, Samsung, Apple, Intel, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis are attending this group, yes. coming together and providing data. And they're all just and, and because and none of them, none of them, I, I must say, none of them, from what we've seen so far, have been remotely honest with the people that are buying the products or their chips, or, or transparent with their dealer body as to what's going to happen. I had a conversation with a the head person at a really large dealer group. And he was telling me, and they, they sold a lot yeah. of Nissans. And yeah. he said, well, Nissan said this month, and this was this was earlier this month. He said, he said or no, this is back in August. He said, yeah. August is going to be the worst month is what Nissan's telling us. And he said, I call BS on that. <laughs> I bet you it's October, November, or December. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the manufacturers are preaching the same things that we're hearing. And yes. then I, I think we all have a BS monitor, and it's going off the charts. Well, it is because they're afraid to tell the truth. So here's a great question, Dad. Yes. What do you think 2022 will look like for cars? I think it'll look a lot like 2021. Okay. I don't think there's going to be any significant increase in production through 2022 because the chip shortage um, and the supply chain issues will not have been addressed by then. And unfortunately, it doesn't appear as if the pandemic is is loosening its grip on what's going on worldwide. Um, you know, between the Delta variant now and God knows what the next variant will be, um, because that's what that's what what. Read yeah. my comments, Zach. Well, I think you should because uh, all my OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, yes. the manufacturers are panicking. I speak to them on a weekly basis. Igor, Igor is a, a managing partner of a dealership group. So, I mean, there and you not, go. And not a very small dealership group. No, no. I think it's a very large dealership group. But as, as, as long as, as, as this pandemic continues, the, there will continue to be supply chain issues. And here's the really telling part. The chip shortage isn't just for automotive. It is for all consumer electronics. Yes, there's still going to be new iPhones. Yes, there's still going to be the new Samsung phones and the new Google phones. 
But no, they won't be able to make them in the numbers that they had in the past because they won't be able to get as many chips as quickly as they needed them. They, they need them for more computers because more and more people are working remotely. Everything, ev everyday electronics is being impacted by this. It is not just car makers. Did you see this article? It was actually a really fascinating one, Dad, in Fortune. Um, and it was chip makers to car makers. Yeah. Time to get out of the semiconductor stone age. It was a really interesting. I did not um, see this. Cool. I'll send this to you and I'll put this in the chat actually right okay. now. It's going to be a little, little matrix situation. Sorry, guys. So let me boom, put that in the chat. This is a really interesting article and one that I recommend anyone who's interested in, in the space read. Yeah. Essentially talking about, hey, car makers, yeah. get, a, get get into high gear, get onto the chips that everyone else is using, stop making us produce legacy things. Yes. Um, and putting a lot that, of the, that are That are low profit chips so that the, manu the chip manufacturers don't really want to be producing those. The brutal cost pressure car makers exert on their suppliers, which source the chips for their various components, is certainly part of the reason why the processors they use tend to be bulk commodity products, but it isn't the only one. Reliability plays a major concern. Most systems in cars are safety critical and need to perform in practically every situation, regardless of temperature, humidity, vibrations, and even minor road debris with so much at stake. Tried and true is better than new and improved. Yeah. So you've got all these and this is actually uh man there are a lot of ads on yeah, fortune's website yeah. how do you read anything on here there's an well, ad here hard. there's it's, an ad there it's hard there. yeah man that's crazy but we we had talked about in the past once a vehicle gets through safety inspection what got through safety inspection has to be what's produced for the road yes. getting another you can't just swap a supplier for a supplier in a production build because no. that got it was all those supplies that got approved yes like if you want to actually change a component that's in, in a vehicle that has to get approved and so there's all these legacy components in vehicles why would we switch them out it's working well now you're getting pushback from from chip makers saying yes. okay well we can make more profitable and in more demand chips for all of our other customers why would we put any of our production capacity towards you guys Especially after you canceled your orders last year. <laughs> yeah, that also that also yes, definitely plays yes, a role. You know. Yeah. So there was one other uh, chip related story that we'll we'll come back here. Uh, let me come back. Let me come back. Where was it? Volvo's doing this thing. Estimated chip toll. Oh yeah, Stellantis is adding more downtime. Yeah. Um, although there was this fascinating article as well. More buyers exit the vehicle hunt. So we haven't, uh, whoops, it didn't let me click on that. Yeah. But Automotive News had an article that talked about how um, less, less buyers in the market. There's less buyers in the market. It, 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 yeah, it, it's, like, it's like the unemployment numbers at times. Um, you know, when the unemployment numbers might go down, uh, oftentimes it's because people have taken themselves out of the job market when they couldn't find a job and they just said the hell with it. Yeah. Um, and so with some of these high prices on cars, there are a large number of people finally saying, the hell with it. I'm not buying a car at, at this point. So they've taken themselves out of the market. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Pops, I want to try something really Which quick. Which is something we had suggested when we when we bought the... The domain name, stopbuyingcars.com. We have done nothing with it, but we own, the way, yeah. we own the domain name, yeah. stopbuyingcars.com. So if somebody wants that... Uh, it's available for sale. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Speaking of Volvo, that's one manufacturer who's going strong and has no hiccups. Limited, I'd say, probably is the more well, appropriate yeah, because word, they, yeah. they they are a a major player, um, in in a sense, but they're not a big volume player. Correct, so yeah. they don't they don't produce in the same volume levels as as Subaru or GM or Ford or Stellantis. Unfair. Sanic needs advice to buy a used car from another city. If I'm not mistaken, Dad, let's see if we can let's see if we can help on this one real quick. Uh, didn't we write a a block. I think you wrote this one oh buying a car out of state. I don't know. YAA? Let me see. Okay, let's see. Let's see what that There you go. Buying a vehicle in another state from September 8th. Step by step guide for 2021. Shoppy, and you, you wrote this one. Here you go. So if you're going to buy a car out of state. So <laughs> that was actually one of the things in the automotive news piece about more buyers taking themselves out of the market. Mm -hmm. The survey also asked, are you looking at a wider or broader geographic area for your prospective yeah. purchase? And the answer was, hell yeah, I, yeah, have. <laughs> I have to. So if you are doing that, yes. what are the steps to buy a car in another state? Boom, 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 boom. Oh we break gosh. them down, how to negotiate the price, how to get the pre-purchase inspection. 
how to uh, place a deposit and request to sign the buyer's order, what to do when you take delivery. Oh my God. We what did happens this? what happens if you're gonna buy a car in the state of Massachusetts? That is a total PETA. Yeah. When and who do I pay taxes to if I buy a car in uh, another you state? Can tell me later what that means. Pain in the took us. Oh, that was Pit. cute. That was cute. <laughs> <laughs> if I buy it a car in another state, can I have it shipped to me? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna toss this in that's the a, uh, that's a total pit. Pain, pain in the, the took us. Yeah. I'm gonna toss this. In the chat, and I have one, I have two other things that I want to share back. So there you go. If you're gonna, no, I'll just power. There you go. Two things. Yeah. One thing unrelated to knowledge. My dad and I have a separate YouTube channel that oh we're just gosh. starting to work on again called Ray and Zach. Yeah. There you go, Ray and Zach. That, that son of a gun. That looks a lot like us. We we um we we used to have a podcast called yeah. Vice from My Dad. We'll probably bring it back. Yes, we I also, heard that rumor. We also just posted our first ever right, Dad. reaction video. Yeah. I encourage everyone to watch this and give us feedback. Genuine, yes, candid feedback. Should Honestly, we do more? No. Should we do less? We both found it quite funny, but we're also incredibly biased. Well, well, because I I personally believe I'm kind of funny. <laughs> but you know, just watching my reaction was kind of hilarious. So, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The, the other thing I'll mention is we are hiring for another auto advocate, but one that work, will work most closely with Kimberly on finance and insurance. So if you know anyone who's interested, we need someone who has prior f Is, is this full-time or part-time? Part-time. Part-time. And, 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 and um, remote. Remote? Remote. Oh we won't drag God. people to Bethesda like we drag you here. Oh, my. Well, you know, you drove two-thirds of the way. I did drive two-thirds of yes. the way today. I Boom. drove. I drove the first third. Yes, you did. You yes. did. So if you know anyone who might be interested in joining the YA team who's good, please pass even, on that. Even link. if they're not good. I mean, we'll turn them down. But <laughs> but you could still turn them on to us. We could. We yeah. could and good. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's what I would do. Let's pop the, uh, let's pop uh, the headphones I gotta on. i got to put a headphone on. Uh, <laughs> Eric, I used to like Ray sitting in his chair with a drink giving advice. Well. That was called his parenting style as well. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So, Pops, we, um, the other night. Yes. And we're going to do this on Saturday in earnest. But the other night, we asked for. Who's Ernest? We're having a special guest, Ernest, on Saturday. So, you can leave us voicemails um, at 800 674 5042. Leave us voicemails, your questions, and we're going to play them out on Saturday night during the Saturday night live stream. We're going to pick a few of them. We're going to answer those questions. But just to give a little demonstration of kind of how and what that's going to feel like, yeah. let me let me grab one of these here. Okay. I should have screened this. Hi, Zach. Hi, Ray. It's Kathy Franze. I am James Franze's wife, and I just wanted to say how wonderful it is that you're sharing your knowledge with everybody. And I wanted to say that um, – Thank you for that. And my question is, when do you think this chip shortage will end? And a fun fact about me is that I am an author and a blogger. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you. So that's one of the fun things that we're yeah. going to start doing. Leave us voicemails. So we'll when do we think that chip shortage is going to end? I mean, so let's go yeah. back to the We did that Instagram poll, Dad. Yeah. And uh, what was it? It was 21% said that it was going to end in 2022. Yeah. And 79% said it wasn't. Yeah, but it's not like they know. I... <sighs> I think we'll have – I don't think we'll ever return to pre-pandemic supply. Um, like I actually legitimately don't think we'll ever. Return. No, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think so either. I think, I, I think best case scenario is um, manufacturers are going to figure out how to keep uh, the supplies a little less so that dealers are going to need to get used to working with, say, 60 to 70% of the inventory levels that they used to have. Um, so even when the chip shortage and the supply chain issues are are worked out, um, I, I don't think, you know, a dealership that used to have a 1,000 cars in the lot will probably have somewhere between six, 600 and 700. And that, that still sounds like a lot of cars, but... When it's only sixty to seventy percent of what you used to have, it's not a it's not a lot of cars. Igor hit the nail on the head. It's not profitable to go back to normal, and that's why it might not. I said this early on. Yes, I said we're going to figure out these these bus these business people. They all yeah. went to you know yeah. Wharton and, and and they got their yeah. MBAs. Yeah, they're paid a literal. Um, what's which one? Which one? There's not a big enough bowl to make that, that much. Paid poop. that much money. Yeah. 
to figure out ways to maximize profits. Yeah. This is the new normal. This is what it's what it yes. is. And that's why I think it's so important that we actually build this community and we push back. Because quite frankly, we're gonna need some I think government regulation around this eventually. I oh come on, man. You think every car should be should the dealership have the uh, the autonomy to put a five thousand or eight thousand or ten thousand dollar ADM on something? That's that that yeah, that can't yeah, last yeah, forever. Okay, let let me say this. Um, your your question: Should a dealership have the autonomy? Yes, they should. The is the government should not be stepping in and and saying to any business like that, here here's the max you can do. No, you it's 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 the buying public's job but, but to think, push back. Think back to a world before the Monroney label, before the, the, the well, window that was sticker. different. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Oh, come on. Because, they, I mean, people were just lied to then. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you know. Are we not being lied to now? I don't well, know. But, I don't but, know. No, because there's ADMs and they list the ADM. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I don't I don't think that we need the government to step in okay, and fine. say, but, but I think we need the public to step in and say, no, I, we're, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to participate in this as long as you're going to add X. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think the strength still lies with the consumer. Now, let me say this. If the manufacturers are going to produce less cars and the dealers are going to have less cars on their lot, okay, that doesn't bode well for the consumers. And that is one of the most anti-consumer situations we can find ourselves in because with the limited supply, then the dealers are going to try and adjust their profit margins um, above and beyond what they what they would would have found to be necessary in the past. Kimberly was in the office today. She was. We did a lot of filming. Thank you for driving into yes, the office. Yes, yes. We had a great time today. Yeah, this is from Igor. Yeah, Car yeah. industry lobbying for government and throws billions at government. Yeah. Course. Yeah, it's the it's the like second largest industry in the United States, I think. Well, I I don't Third, know. Fourth. I, I don't I don't know. But it's I, definitely but, on but, the top but, ten. But I know, I, I know, you know, the automobile dealers associations and the manufacturers have a lot of sway uh, with both state and federal governments. Let's listen to one more question. Again, leave your voicemails. Let me put okay. that back. I can't wait to do that. Oh, it's going to be a blast. Can I call to leave a voicemail? Yeah, you humor me. As I screen them on Friday night and I listen to my dad call it, I, I don't have to listen to you enough. If I blow up, ladies and gentlemen, it's only because I had an internal sneeze and not an external one. There you have it. At least it's a nice thing to know in advance. Ready? Yeah. Hi, this is Daniel. I live in Connecticut. Um, I just had a question. I bought a Civic 2018 a couple months ago for around 17000 and I was wondering if it would be a good time to see what I can get for it if I were to go into the dealer and get something like the new 2022 uh, Civic. Uh, if you could just help me out to better understand how the market is right now, I'd appreciate it. So I find that actually really interesting. Okay. So this is someone who a month ago yeah. bought a 2018. Yeah. And is now wondering, is now a good time to go in and buy the 2022? The scary thing is, yeah. unlike times in the past, you could probably justify doing that right now. Yeah, assuming that, that they'll overpay for his 2018 and and they're going to force him to overpay for the 2022. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a tough market. Uh, if, if, he, if he just wanted to sell the 2018 – and not get another car, he could probably make out okay. And we'd probably suggest just hold on to that 2018 for another yeah. six to eight months. Yeah. It'll be worth even more. Or, or forever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Here's a uh, – uh, whoops, I thought I saw it interesting. Uh, these are the same people that told you that it's a wing shortage when wings are attached to chickens. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. No, I, guess. I, <laughs> I don't care. I, I don't, well, no, there's a wing shortage, <laughs> you that, know, yeah. 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 The, haven't you seen the Wingstop commercials with the, um, uh, uh, God, uh, the, with all the Rolls Royces? And, and it's your the, favorite rapper. What's his name? Come on, it's your favorite rapper. I, I don't Money know. Clips. I don't have a favorite rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Rick Ross. Rick Ross. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. And and so they're doing thighs. But, you know, 
Yeah, they still only have two thighs per chicken. This is true. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, they still only have two wings. Robert's new to the channel from Vegas. Thanks for being here, Robert. Um, All right, let's see here. You know, Robert, we spent some quality time in Vegas last winter. We did indeed. Yeah. Um, all right, I have a RAV4 2015 with 102,000 miles. I need a new car, but now I'm not going to. going to drive it to the ground. That's our recommendation. Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. And, and you know what? If it's a 2015 RAV4 with 102,000 miles on it, if you do a little bit of the, of the maintenance that, that's required to keep those cars around, that car is good for 300,000 miles. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So, I mean, my God, you wait, don't need, wait, it. Wait yeah, you don't need a new car. Yeah. All right, we got Ann saying, last time I'm going to ask. Yes, yeah. All right, we got to answer. Okay. We got to deliver. Yeah, I'll, I'll, Usually I'll, when the pressure's on, I struggle to deliver. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you're not the only one. Yeah. 2010 Corolla, 129,000 miles, 11,000. What the hell? Yeah. $11,000 OTD. Yeah. 2014 Camry with 145,000 miles, yeah. $14,000. So, so, so I... I and I'm assuming the question is, which one should you buy? The answer would be neither at those prices. But that's the unfortunate thing, Dad, is that those are probably the two that fit her budget and are in her area. And the, so, so I don't disagree with my dad's initial reaction, neither, right? Because they both yeah. seem like kind of intimidatingly expensive. The yes. process that we recommend to de derive if a price is fair right now for yeah. a used car, Anne, would be take those VINs. Yes. Run them through BlackBook. Yes. Back on joinya.com. Run them through BlackBook. See what BlackBook says the value of them are. Compare that to what it, the OTD price is. Yes. Then go to Carvana and run it in there and see. And, yeah. and Igor, yeah, Igor says neither. But run it through Carvana. See what they would pay to buy it. Run it through CarMax. Yeah. See what they would pay to buy it. And that will give you some idea as to what its real value might be. It's probably new. Eleven thousand in twenty ten. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. But I, but I, so I see everyone's doing the comments, right? Just say you gotta. We gotta provide some strategies. Yeah. There you go. Both cars are under twenty five hundred to three thousand at maximum as actual cash value, if that. Mm -hmm. Which, but you gotta have some strategies to justify because there's no there's no freaking cars out there. So if you're gonna go down that path, those are that's two things that you can do to start to justify. Well, um, if if I was going down that path and I and, and I felt like I I needed to do something, I think I would spend my money on Uber, Lyft, uh, Yellow Cab, any cab, uh, public transportation. I don't know those and, apps. Yeah, and 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 put off the purchase of that type of vehicle as long as you can. Um, you know, in 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 the early days, my early days in the business. You know, once a car hit 100,000 miles, it's like the, the, the value just fell like a rock. Yeah. Uh, and today, you know, what they're getting for these vehicles that are 11 years old or, or uh, 8 years old with over, well over 100,000 miles is, is it's not, not to quote one of my favorite rappers, but it's, it's ludicrous. I react to rap here. Boom. Okay, Pops, we have back on the Twitch. Twitch? We have Cycling Banana, an OG Twitch streamer. We get, just so everyone knows, we yeah. get like two views on Twitch per stream, and we're still going to do it every time because Cycling Banana, you keep us coming. We yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. What may occur with limited production volume with your theory that OEMs will continue this practice in hopes they can keep prices high is that future model development may also get scaled back or even discontinued. Such a great question. I have an opinion on this. What's yeah. your take on it? Um, well, I, I mean, obviously, the future model development is towards EVs, um, you know, and they've already they've already committed billions upon billions of dollars um, that they're going to invest in in developing and manufacturing and, and selling and servicing EVs. So, um, but I think the the point being scaled back. I think that we're going to see. So, so I, okay, so here, here's here's fewer models, fewer makes, fewer, fewer updates, fewer you know, like like the, the the life expectancy for a manufacturer when they like 
accurate when they would come out with the new TL or whatever it was, you know, it might have been a five to seven year life cycle before they would do a, re a complete redesign. Yeah. OK, well, maybe that goes to 10 years. I don't know. Or maybe we just turn into Cuba. I don't know. <laughs> Pops, when was the last time you went to the Cheesecake Factory? To the where? The Cheesecake Factory. Uh, it's been a while. But you, you know the Cheesecake Factory, right? I, I've, That's, I've, the menu's like that big. And and it's 473 pages last time I counted. Boom. Yeah. I think we're moving away from the Cheesecake Factory model. You heard this here yeah, first. The next time you go to the Cheesecake Factory, it'll be a three-page menu without the ads. And and the total, so, the total offerings will be 33. And so eleven can, per page. We 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 ate at a restaurant here in Bethesda called Fish Taco today. We did. How big was the menu there? Uh, Pretty tiny. Yeah. Well, you know. You know why? Why? Efficiency. I think we're going to continue to see scale. There's more problems. We ate at the Palm last night, and we were told that their menu is much smaller than it used to be. Proof that size continues yeah. to not matter, and potentially is a benefit. Yeah. When you, it's smaller, you keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Yeah, see, cheesecake's such a good thing. Craig agrees. Cheesecake is a great thing. It is. What is the most reliable pickup, Ranger or Tacoma? Uh, I, I would go Tacoma. with the Tacoma. We're two votes for Tacoma yeah. there. Um, piece of cheesecake's 11 bucks. Wow. Jeez. Wow. You know, I remember when I could buy a tasty cake for a nickel. So anybody that's from the Philadelphia area, you'll know what the hell I'm talking about. Scuba Steve saying, I just bought my 2021 Subaru brand new. I had not uh, I had asked about a 2020 and was told it would cost more than buying it brand new. How does that make any sense? It doesn't, but people are paying more for 2020 used ones than they would have for a new one. Is tire insurance worth it? Tire and wheel protection? Depends on if you find it valuable, yes, negotiate I, it. Here, here's what I can tell you. I just curbed my th three out of my four wheels. I, I, the two on the left I had done already, and I did the front right last night. So I only got one more to go. Justice, and, appreciate you being here. Former in and out manager, a small menu is key to efficiency. Yeah, I would think it would be. Absolutely. You, you know, you know how, how, how about you open a store and you just call it the one item store? Yeah, yeah. efficiency. Yeah, we got one item. Yeah, and we're yeah. really good at it. Can I, can I have, we got one item. <laughs> You can have the one item. All right, let's listen to one more question, and then I know you're super tired, so we won't drag out the stream too terribly. Saturday night. Saturday night's going to be fun. We've actually already put thought into what we're going to do. With, and, and just so I can say, we never do that. Yeah, so it's like actually yeah. I'm proud of yeah. us. Ready? Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name is Matthew, and I'm calling from Houston, Texas. Uh, fun fact about myself, I sold my Camaro for three grand more than I paid for it, put 48,000 miles on it. But I had a quick question. I wanted to find out uh, when do you think is the best time to buy in this market? I have a car. It's going to expire. Um, it's got 150,000 miles on it. So at some point in the next year, uh, I'm going to need to buy a car. But I wanted to find out, should I buy one You know, maybe this holiday season before the end of the year, or should I wait until sometime next year? Uh, I wanted to get your opinion. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't mean to cut so off. So much. Appreciate you guys. Love the show. Love the show. Oh, I, I love I'm him. I'm glad I kept that going. Uh, yeah. So the uh, question there is kind of, kind of like I, I, two things. Within the next year, when's the right time to buy? And then the second question is for you is, does end of year even matter anymore? Because it used to be end of year is the best time to get a car deal. Well, uh, I don't know that it does, but I, 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 I would hope that it, it still would to a certain degree. So... Let's see how this holiday season plays out. Uh, that'll give us a better indication as to what the future holds. Yeah. Um, and I don't really suspect that we're going to see any type of substantial increase in vehicle production for 2022. Um, so I, I don't necessarily see it getting better then. So the hope would be... Would you say buy a car right now then? I don't, I'm not, if you're saying a one-year window, are you saying right now... Is I, I, I would... I, it, I'm saying if it were me, I, I would wait till December just to see how December plays out before I jump on something right this minute. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I would buy a car right now. Okay. I would. Okay. There you have it, folks. It doesn't get any oh. more definitive than that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because I just—I mean, what, 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 what indication do we have that anything's going to get better? 
We we don't. I I mean, just other than perhaps the manufacturers will feel compelled to put some extra incentives in place at the end of the year. Yeah, Igor doesn't agree with you. I don't, I don't agree with you, but I I am interested to see. Okay. I, and, I hope and, you're right. And, and 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 you know, let's face it, Igor is closer to it than I am these days. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. So, in answer to that gentleman's question, uh, a year ago would have been a perfect time. <laughs> Wait six to nine months, buddy. Yeah. Um, okay. Go back in time. Get your get your uh, um, flux capacitor. Yeah, exactly. Capacitor. Ca- capacitor. capacitor. <laughs> and, and put that in your uh, Brooklyn. Were you Brooklyn? No, I don't know. Was it? What are you talking DeLorean. About? Put it in your DeLorean and go back in time, back to the future. Joseph, thank you for the kind donation. Let's answer this here. What are your thoughts about Tesla longer term with all the big manufacturers like VW coming out with affordable? Electrics. What's your take on that? Do you think Tesla will reign supreme? No. 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 I, I you think, think the major OEMs will catch up absolutely. and then take them down. Absolutely. Not take them know. down, but yeah, like but slow them down. I, I mean, you know, Tesla was the one. Well, you know, they're not going to be the one forever. If 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 at one time, let me help you with this. At one time, Ford was the one. I don't know. General Motors is still bigger than Ford today. Do you think we'll ever be the one, or the the two? Will we be the? T- I just I'd be happy if we could be in the top ten. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. So so I I I think I think there are people out there that that like Tesla and are enamored with Tesla and like the the uh, the fact that they can order it directly from Tesla, but you know. VW and all these manufacturers, they, 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 got, they got a wee little bit of money still. And, uh, you know, they're going to flex their muscles yeah. and they will find ways to make inroads into Tesla's market, whether it be cheaper, whether it be better looking, whether it have a longer range, whatever it is, um, they'll, they'll figure it out. There is a really great video. Uh, question for the stream. Would anyone ever be interested in us when we stream if we like watched videos on the stream and like gave our commentary of those videos while we're watching the stream? The reason I ask is because um, Marquise Brownlee, I think is his name. Um, let me see. MKBHD. Um, MKBHD, he put out a video. Yep, here it is. Driving 1,000 miles in three cars, gas versus electric. And it was a really interesting uh, yeah. video. They did yeah. it in an Audi Q5, a Ford Mustang Mach-E, okay. and a Tesla Model S Plaid Edition. Okay. And um, and the big takeaway from the video, Dad, yeah. I mean, they all did it, obviously. Yeah. And, the, and the Audi was for – they wanted to see who could do it fastest. Yeah. And they did one night's rest. But they yeah. tracked it the two separate days. The Audi finished first. by, yeah. And it beat the Tesla by like 45 minutes because the Tesla had to stop and charge. Yeah. The Ford. Yeah. The Ford took like 16 more hours or something crazy than everyone else because all the different uh, Electrify America chargers yeah. either weren't working, they were super slow, they had to backtrack on the route. It was a really good video and one that I would love if we were actually able to watch and like kind of share with the community live. Although 2.3 million people have already watched it, so probably yeah. everyone here has seen it. But yeah. such an interesting example of why Tesla right now has a huge advantage it's the charging infrastructure yeah. and it's the reliability of that charging infrastructure. And for example, Ford relying on Electrify America, uh, that video, uh, MKBHD has like interviewed Elon Musk and Tim yeah. Cook. Like he's, he's got a big microphone, a big megaphone. It's kind of a wake up I got a big microphone. <laughs> Size still does not matter. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's, it's a good wake up call to say you got to have the charging infrastructure if you yes. want to be able to. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I keep having this conversation with you. I live in a condo and, and I have no, no availability to be able to charge an electric vehicle at my condo. Yep. I don't see the condo association investing any of our condo funds into installing um, electric vehicle charging stations there. I don't even know where I could take a car, an electric vehicle, to go charge it if I needed to. Um, so, I, yeah, I think I think there's issues, um, but but the issues will certainly be addressed at some point in time. Uh, I mean, obviously, when cars first came out, there weren't a lot, a lot of gas stations. Uh, that kind of got addressed. Yeah, yeah. No, nope, yeah. I completely agree. I'm just saying right now. Yes. You know, they have. 
they have that advantage. Okay, Pops, final promo throw of the night. Yeah. yeah I had my dad watch um, a Drake music video. I mean, it's 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 pretty – It's yeah, we watched. He reacted. It was pretty funny. Please watch it. Please like it. Please let us know. Please, or dislike it if you don't like yeah, it. Yeah, if tell you us. don't like it, you know, that's fine too. There was a uh, really funny moment in here though. Oh, man, where was it? There were a lot of Oh, when Kawhi Leonard shows up. Yeah. God, that was funny. Yeah. Maybe we're just, I don't know. You yeah. let us know if we're funny. Yeah. Um, it's on the channel. It's called Ray and Zach. We're going to start posting again back on this channel, not things automotive related. So we love doing automotive stuff, yes. obviously. That's the whole, like, YAA. That's what we do. But personal you know, we, channel, we'll yeah, have some we, fun. We have, we have other interests above and beyond cars yeah, yeah 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 it'll be fun yeah. it'll be really fun you know i got my wine collection we could, we might do a wine and cheese night folks i don't know the other thing i actually should mention yes. um i posted a video i think everyone on the stream might be interested in this how much money we've made on youtube yeah i just opened up youtube studio the other day and showed it like live on this video yes. uh, also talking about going into business with my dad um these are solo videos these are just me maybe i'll get my dad on on my personal channel eventually that's just zach chefska uh, see if i see if i make the cut ladies and gentlemen this video honestly this video they might put ads yeah that's yeah. that's crazy they put ads on videos i don't even have ads on but anyway yeah, check it out how could that be because then they just take 100 percent of the money yeah those you know those google people then the other thing I want to mention, back on Instagram, we're posting more there. It was so cool today to do the behind the scenes, uh, you know, shots of you and Kimberly, yes. um, you know, filming. Also, aren't these photos adorable? Like, we both wore the same outfit today, and we yeah, did. My much. dad picked me up because yeah. we drove back to the DC area today. We both wore the same outfits: blue yeah. shoes. Yeah. I need to get my dad green pants. Yeah, it was adorable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, looking all cool. Yeah, 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 looking and, all cool. And here comes my favorite. Drink. Aww. Yeah. With the F&I goddess herself. With the F&I goddess herself. Yes. Yeah, so we're having fun here. Follow my dad at Raz's Jazz. Follow me at, at Shevska and your Advocate Alliance as well. Okay, we'll be back on Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. Saturday night will be a hell of a fun stream. We've got a lot of things planned for that. We actually have planned out what we want to do, and we also likely will take some phone calls just for fun as well. Okay. And then, Dad, I didn't tell you this, but um, Arash and his wife, Sharon, they want to meet up with us afterwards, go out, have a little fun after the stream. So that that could be, if you're up for it, if you have energy, we could go have some fun. Man, man, where are you taking me? Taking you to the club. <laughs> they let old people like me in the club? Show them your moves. I mean, the only the only club that they normally let me in is the geriatric club. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining on Thursday night. That was quite fun. We'll see. Well, I'm going to hang out with you tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to see where. I'm going to see where you live in DC. Yeah, you're going to check out my new apartment, yeah. which I'm super yeah. excited about. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then Saturday night we'll be on the stream. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, everyone. Good night, all. All right. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, joinya.com slash careers for hiring. Yes, yes. Don't forget, we're looking for uh, some part-time help. Aw, Igor says happy birthday to your daughter. Yeah, my sister's oh, birthday is tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's right. Thank you, Igor. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, now send me your credit card information and you can treat her to dinner. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>